I'm Katie Green. Hi, I'm Dan Green. Welcome back to the Greening Out podcast. Welcome. Now, I think Katie wants to start this time. I do. Um, I'd like to start off by saying hello. Well, welcome. Uh, and also just to say that today we were talking um, about the minimum wage. And the reason we're talking about this is because I was in work the other day and I saw a sort of a very small, mind you, uh, article in the Metro newspaper, which we get free on the bus here. So I was reading it and um, the, the gist of the article was that the minimum wage does more harm than good. And at first, I mean, even I emotionally reacted to that headline. I was like, what? Um, but actually, when you, when you really, really look into it, the minimum wage actually is not the best thing in the world. A lot of people go, yay, more money. But you, you really have to look at it from an economic kind of standpoint from uh, the perspective of um, employers and it's using emotions over facts yeah, uh-huh, ba- ba- basically and I just want to say that your wage should really depend on your productivity what you are worth to that employer uh, how much money you can make them that's not to sound cold or anything like that and it's not to belittle anyone's job I'm not saying that at all but sometimes the fact is that somebody's productivity is simply not worth the the minimum wage well that's the thing because um say for example just to use like a daft example say i make teddy bears and i'm a capitalist and i want Mm -hmm. to make teddy bears Mm -hmm. you know um and i employ a bunch of people to make them yes so i pay them their wages and they make the teddy bears when it comes when the teddy bears come to market People might not buy them, but I can't take the wages back yes, from the people true. who made them. That's true. You know, so I've taken that risk. I've made that investment. In so, yeah, yeah. You, and that's what you do when you hire somebody. You make an investment. You think, are, are they? this is going to be worth it to me? Are they going to make me money? Or maybe they won't be worth it at first, but are they going to become worth it? Oh, yeah, they're it's be like worth we it talk end. about skilled and unskilled, and that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean you have a diploma. No. Because I worked as an undertaker. Mm-hmm. And I was taught how to fit coffins. Yes. And um, so now I'm like a skilled coffin fitter. That's a very morbid fact for you all. But yeah, so I'm a skilled coffin fitter, but I don't have a diploma or anything. Yeah. But I know how to do it. Skilled. But if I was applying for a job, you could you use know, that. Yeah, versus someone who's never uh, done the work, you know, yeah. with an undertaker's. Yeah. You know, I have that skill. So skilled, all skilled means, I'm not talking like, like Dan said, I'm not talking about educational sort of d- diploma, a bit of paper skill. I'm talking about if you're a skilled worker, that means that you, you know what you're doing. Um, you are not as much of a risk to somebody as as, as somebody coming in who is green and is, is an unskilled worker. Yeah, and absolutely. Um and that's the thing, it's like, we have to understand, like, we get lost in these Marxist ideas of mm. all the employees are, you know, they're oppressed by these dirty, filthy capitalist pigs. Dirty. <laughs> but we have to understand that employment, like anything else, is a mutual exchange. Mm-hmm. And there's such a thing as opportunity cost. You go to work um, because you value the money you make from mm-hmm. your work more than your leisure time. Yeah. And in the same way, the employer values the labour you do more than the money he pays you. Exactly. So again, it's a voluntary mutual exchange. And mm-hmm. I think we get lost in this um, sort of Marx, these Marxist oppressionist ideas, like we're sort of in Victorian times, you know, and like yeah. there's children down, there's all those children up chimneys and down mines and all this kind of thing. Scrooge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we, yeah, yeah. I, I think we have to. I think we have to, you know, bring it to, you know, like our modern today. times. We need yeah. to bring it into today. Well, exactly. Yeah, because it's largely irrelevant. So why don't you give us a little example of well, how the minimum wage can be damaging? Just okay. give us a give us a silly this example. This is just a silly little example here. Why don't we stick with teddy bears? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to run a teddy bear um, factory here, right? So why I, not? I have, I have Katie's teddy That's bear factory. That's dream. Mm-hmm. And I make uh, wee stuffed bears. And uh, like any successful business, I hire people to do that. So I hire Steve, Mick and Jack to stuff my bears. And on each bear, I can make 10 pence profit. So Steve's pretty good. Steve can stuff 80 bears in an hour. So 
80 bears at 10 pence each. His productivity to me is worth £8 an hour. I pay him 6 and I make £2 off him. Mick, on the other hand, is pretty, pretty good. Mick can stuff 100 bears in an hour. And at 10 pence a bear, he makes me £10 an hour. I pay him 6 as I pay all my employees. And I make £4 profit off of him. Now, Jack... Jack's not quite as good. Jack can stuff 70 bears in an hour. And at 10 pence a bear, he makes £7 an hour. He's worth £7 an hour to me in productivity. So I'll pay him six as I pay the other two. And I'll still make a pound profit an hour off of him. So great. Everybody wins. I see no problem I so see far. no problem what's happening here. This is the free market. We're just having fun, right? However, oh, if I could become the government... Ah, uh, the big government. And so they're coming it. in and they're going to go... <laughs> so now... Now, see see here. <laughs> six pounds an hour simply will not do. People cannot no. live on six pounds an hour. Seven pound fifty. That's, that's what you that's need That's unacceptable. That's rate. the one. So people go, yay, seven pound fifty, more money. Yay, we're all getting gonna rich. Good. We're all going to get rich. So, seven pound fifty an hour. So I look at my books again and I go, okay, I need to pay these guys now pound fifty more an hour. What am I going to do? Okay, Steve, you make eighty... Uh, you're worth eight pounds. You're still making me fifty p profit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you, Steve. Mick, you make a hundred in an hour. You're worth a lot to me. You're my star player. You make me ten pounds an hour. I'm still gonna make two pound fifty profit off of you. Great. I'm gonna keep you, Jack. Jack, you boy. Oh, Jack. Poor Jack. Jack. Oh, Jack. Jack can only stuff seventy bears um in an hour. He his productivity is seven pounds. £7.50 minimum wage per hour means that I cannot afford to keep Jack. Jack's actually costing me 50 pence an hour to keep him here. Um, that's business. Jack has to go. And all of a sudden you've got, you've got, you know, two men doing the work of three. And that's, that's what's wrong with that picture. Well, absolutely. And, you know, the fact of the matter is all the minimum wage does there is it hurts Jack because he's not worth it. And this is a silly example and we're being very basic here. I know, yeah, this is the base level but, yeah, sort of thing. <laughs> but there is a point to this and the fact is Mick will do just fine yeah. because say another rival bear factory opens up. I know we're Ooh. using silly examples but just for entertainment purposes we like to keep the show light. Damn bear people. Yeah, so, but if Mick is commanding the, uh, if his productivity is that high then he will be worth more to another employee, another employer. Mm-hmm. You know, then he'll be able to command a raise because he'll say, well, this other guy's going to pay me more mm-hmm. because, you know, I'm a good worker. So he goes, well, the other guy said he'll pay me, he'll pay me nine an hour. And I'll look at my books and go, well, you make me ten an hour. You're worth it. You're still worth it. I don't want to lose you because if you go, I'm going to have to train up some other person. And that's just going Who to be... doesn't a, have your level of productivity. Going to be in the arse. So that's how it goes. And, you know, that's that's a good thing. That is progress. That is people working. It, it's just how it is, you know. You can say, you know, we're not in, you know, the Industrial Revolution times. I think it's important to mention the fact that Karl Marx never actually visited a factory despite the fact that Friedrich Engels, you know, invited him. Yeah. I just think that's important, but... The fact of the matter is, I think Professor Walter Block, um, he put it best because he described them as like a hurdle, like the minimum wage, mm-hmm. you know? And if your productivity can't clear that hurdle... You're never going to get... Well, that's anywhere. the problem. And that's what... Then that's a deeper problem because that's what keeps young people out of the job market. Absolutely. Because they can't clear that hurdle. Mm. If if there's a minimum wage imposed, they're mm. not worth that minimum wage because they've got no skills. But if you're a young, enthusiastic person, like an apprentice in this country, because apprentices yeah. get paid very low wages. And it's because of those reasons, the risk, the, the cost for training them up. It's a big risk, yeah. It is a risk. And, you know, apprentices, I, I agree with the, with apprenticeships. It's a shame there's not more in, in this country and all over the world. It's actually a shame that I know a lot of people that I went to school with that... Um, they were kind of pushed towards college and things. It didn't work out for them. But see if they... Because what I found about school in this country, and I find mm-hmm. that that's quite a, it's quite a thing with a lot of schools, they say, oh, you need to go to college, you need to go to university. But I know a lot of people and, yeah. that see if they'd have been offered apprenticeships and if it would be made easier for them, yeah. they'd be doing great now. Yeah. 
you know, that's just a sort of side issue. Yeah. But the point is, a lot of young people can't get jobs because of the minimum wage law. Yes. And that is the problem. And, and people might go, oh, well, that's fine for us because we're all getting the minimum wage. I'll say, fine, but you're not thinking long term, which is another thing that we often talk about. You have to think long term. Yeah. Those young people can't get the skill because they're not worth the minimum wage mm-hmm. just now. Their productivity is simply not worth the minimum wage. Yeah. So how are they supposed to achieve those skills? And that but is... if you hire them at a lower rate, yeah. as their productivity and their skills... Because you yeah. know what it's like when you first start working? It's hard to get used to being in the workplace Absolutely. and getting used to how the job works. But see, as you go on, right. you find that in every job you get better, you get more efficient, and you're worth more to your employer. Mm-hmm. So that's why if we had no minimum wage... Mm-hmm. And these people started at a low wage. Mm-hmm. They, there would be people that wouldn't do so well, mm-hmm. right? But there'd be the ones that would excel. They would put themselves into it, and then soon they would be worth much more to the employer. Yes, and then they would command higher wages. Where you know, as in, if they ask for a wage rise and say, "Well, mm-hmm. someone else might hire me," or whatever, mm-hmm. but they would command higher wages with, the, or they could apply for a different job because they've now got the relevant experience. Mm-hmm. See, a lot of young people suffer from the fact that they can't get the first job to get the experience. That's, and that's they, it. And that's they won't exactly get it. hired because they've got no experience. But how mm-hmm. did they get it in the first place? And that, that, is, that lends itself to exploitation. And we actually have now, um, there's a story a little while ago. I, I'd like to find this maybe and reference it um, in the notes. Uh, people now are applying to do unpaid work. Oh yeah, like internships and that, just to get some kind just of experience. Just to get the experience, just to get the experience. And they're getting no They're not getting recogni- any, uh-huh, nothing. no financial recognition, no no money for their time. They could be in these jobs for a year, two, two years. Their labour surely would be worth a lot more. Well, exactly, and, and that's the point, you know, how do we stop youth unemployed, well, sorry, well, how do we reduce youth unemployment? Yeah, you can't stop yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> How do we reduce it? We reduce it by getting rid of minimum wage and letting employers take on young, enthusiastic people at a low wage. Mm-hmm. And then what we'll do from that, well, what will happen from there is they'll gain more skills. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, you see this in different industries as mm-hmm. well because if you have, like, a lot of... If you have so much labour, there's no minimum wage and labour is quite free, Mm -hmm. then you'll find that as companies grow because of that, Mm -hmm. then employers will have to bid up for wages. Mm -hmm. You know, other... You know, like, say a company will see someone that's doing well Mm -hmm. and they'll try and poach their employees. I've seen it in my own working life. I've seen... Mm -hmm. I've worked for companies... Obviously, I won't name the companies, but Mm -hmm. I know that those companies have actually given employees from rival companies higher wages to come and work from them. I've seen that before. Because they want... uh, They want the skill. They want the skill. They want to be the best in their field. Yeah. So if you are really good at making bread, (laughs) you're (laughs) going to demand... I'm just making really, really (laughs) daft analogies. But if you're really good at making bread, you're going to go to the top bread hod show. You're going to go to Hovis or Warburton's and you're going to go, look, I make I suppose I could make one... I, 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 don't, I don't need to name the company, but I could make one example. Mm. I worked for an Undertakers. Yes, you did. And there was an employee that was at a certain rival Undertakers. Mm-hmm. And my boss yes. actually um, gave him much higher wages to come work for us. So because he was a good, he was good at what he did. Mm-hmm. He knew a lot of people. He was a talented guy. Mm-hmm. So he actually paid him more to come work for the company I was working at at the time. And that's how that works. Yeah. You know, employers will bid up for wages if labour is more plentiful. Mm -hmm. What stops labour being so plentiful is these minimum wage laws. And I know it sounds good, but I don't think, no, it doesn't help anyone. No. No, it doesn't. I, people might attack us and say, oh, but what what, what if it got scrapped and you started getting paid so little an hour? I have the knowledge. I, I, I think I'm good at my job. Yeah. And you think you're, you're good at qualified. your job. I know. I'm qualified to do my job and I like to I know it. for a fact there's a lot of rival companies coming up to the company I work for just now. And yes. I have no doubt that they'll start in the next few years Try bidding up. with Yeah, <laughs> with deregulation and stuff. Like, I have no doubt. So deregulation. Deregulation. It's such a hard word. I know. But now I have no doubt that they will start building up, like bidding up for wages. Yeah. That's that's how it works, you and know. That's and that's why a free market is. We have to let idea. the market work, and 
we should just make this little note that you hear people in mainstream media blaming the free market for things. We've never actually had a free market. Yeah. So how about we have a free market let's first? Let's just see how it goes. Yeah, let's have a know. free market first and then you can complain about it. Um, so I think we've covered this I've pretty covered well. covered what I want to cover. Um, what, I'd, what I'd like to do now, if this is all right, is I would like to say everyone thanks for the donations. Really awesome. And thanks for your kind emails we've had so far. Um, and I would like to say that we have been in touch with some great people Really, recently. really excited about really the Really excellent people that we're going to have on the show. Yeah. Um, we're going to start greening out interviews. We're going to start recording them this week. And the guests are fantastic. And we'll obviously... Once obviously in time. Once, <laughs> once we've recorded the interviews, we'll actually, you know, we'll start giving you all the details of who's on and yeah. when. But... We have really great guests we've been in touch with. Um, We're really, really excited about the future and we just want to say a really, really big thank you. Um, get us on www.greeningoutpodcast.co.uk yeah. and at Twitter at greening underscore, underscore out. Yeah, and we're uh, also on Facebook. We are on Facebook. We're on Tumblr as well. We, we don't get a lot of love on Tumblr. No, we don't, we don't get a lot of Tumblr love. Um, but that's okay, you know. But you can search Greening Out and, and you, you, I'm sure that you will find us. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. Yes, yeah, thanks for listening. Um, and next time you hear about someone talking about, oh, the minimum wage should be higher, let's just think. I mean, Give them a link to the show. Wouldn't it be great if the minimum wage was £100 an hour, but do no. you really think in your job you're worth that? Are you really worth that in, in reality? I mean, even, <laughs> even if we're going to, you know, we, we could sit here all day and we could talk about numbers, but at the end of the day... We've said what we've had to say about the minimum wage and we're just going to leave it at that. Yeah, so thanks very much for listening. Thank you. As always, greetingoutpodcast.co.uk and would you like to just say your thing you always say? Oh, I always say this. If you want to get in touch, um, please do. We actually have uh, an email address specifically for hate mail. Yeah. Randy Bobandy at greeningoutpodcast.co.uk yeah. uh, that is where you can send your hate mail to us if you want to S- say fuck you. Send it all. Send it all. <laughs> if you want to send some love mail. Um, Katie at greeningoutpodcast.co.uk yes. um, and keep tuned to the website because we have some excellent guests coming you're going to love it great, alright thank you thanks, see you later, thanks for listening <laughs> <laughs>